right guys so this is going to be um, a beta flight configure walkthrough for when you build your quad and you want to go in and get it set up first you're going to have to download beta flight uh, which can be done at github.com and then look at you know what it is you know your uh, windows that you have and it's self-explanatory right there if you don't have uh, if you're plugging in your drone you can see up here I got com6 uh, I'm already plugged in um, if you don't have that happen you have to follow these steps right through here these three steps here go ahead and do all that and then I'll open up the drivers in your PC and make it able for you to connect so when you connect it um, before we go into it let me also talk about firmware update so if you want to update your firmware on your flight controller you have what they call a bootloader button it's a little button on your flight controller if you ever wonder what that was plug in your USB port you know and don't have it plugged into your PC is how I do it and then I press in on that uh, bootloader button and then when I plug into the PC that puts me in DFU mode um, and that's how you then once you're in see it says com6 up here it'll say DFU once you're there you're good um, before doing that I would go in and connect and then look at right here your target we're at a Maytec uh, 722 or F722 so that's an F7 flight controller the 22 I don't know what that means but <laughs> so you always want to look at your target just connect Go to update firmware. Kind of right here, you're going to choose your board. Remember, we said it was a Maytec. So we're going to go down to Maytec and we're going to find the F722, which is right here. It says mini and then HD, and then it's no HD or nothing. Remember, only if it says these abbreviations, you want to do these abbreviations. But mine said Maytec F722. That's what I picked. <laughs> So then I got, I'm sorry about that. So then I have, um, I usually use beta 4.1.1. Uh, you can choose whatever firmware version that you're looking for, but that's normally what I do. And I'm not gonna, well, I'll click it just to show you. So you click that. Uh, as far as this stuff here, read here, if this is what you wanna do. Um, wipes all, can, you know, this says no reboot sequence. Enable your FC in the boot mode i.e. if you powered on your FC blah 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 just read that if you feel like you need to do it do it you can click this and that wipes all the configuration off the data and then puts everything back onto it so after doing all that you picture board your picture protocol or your target which one you're going with then right down here on the bottom you would hit load firmware online and I could do that it's not gonna hurt you see how it does that so it pops up tells you all your your beta flight 4.1 da 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 da, da uh, and it just tells you what they've done and if they fixed throughout it target updates you know read all that if you're into that I kinda just do it so much I don't even pay attention to it anymore and then you would just like I said be in DFU mode up here instead of COM6 and you would hit flash firmware and you'd see across here it would literally start doing it and go all the way over and then let you know when it's done and obviously I see on the new beta it says exit DFU mode so at that point it would probably light up you just click that and it would take you out of DFU mode and then put you into the COM6, COM3, whatever COM you're using so that's how you update your firmware onto it after you update your firmware you want to click into this um, this model here is going to show you that your quad is in the right orientation you see as I tilt forward it's forward I tilt back it's back left and right so you want to always know that you want to make sure that works I suggest leaving on the accelerometer until you figure out that don't look off the arrow on the board because lots of times it's wrong I have one in here right now that I built last week and the arrow is wrong on the boards which means they put the gyro in just when they set it on the board and they soldered it they just had it turned in a different orientation and their boards were already marked it's, a, it's no worries just you can correct all that and I'll show you how to do that so then on the ports tab you're going to want, want to know what you are you sought you solder to meaning RX pad is exactly what it's going to be so this would be RX2 is where we're soldered to and 
if you're going to do your smart audio and all that, I believe we're in 5, so you would do this, you would pick your VTX TBS smart audio if it's got that, you know, software in it, or your IRC tramp. These are normally the two we're using. Uh, they may be using something else here, it says camera run cam protocol, that might be something that I don't know about, maybe some DJI stuff, but anyway. Uh, normally, a lot of your VTXs are set up with the TBS, so you just click that and then you hit save and reboot. Um, I'm not going to do that just now because, like I said, I don't. I'll set it up later. I'm just run it through here for you. So then, on configuration, always remember to save and reboot. You always want to do that and never touch this one right here. USB VCP. Let it alone. Don't never touch this. Leave this. Just totally be. Always take your time in here and move slow and that's your best way of doing things. This one's gonna have GPS, I think I was on UART 3, so I would go GPS, and then the baud rate, or whatever, it's like 9600 on that one that I'm using. So, like I said, I'm gonna do all this later, just to, just, just to show you guys. So configuration, here's where you're at. You're gonna to wanna to know, first of all, your orientation, this is your motors. Uh, leave this alone here. It goes to the quad X, let it go, it's fine. It puts it right into what you're using. Now if you're gonna do a hex, a octocopter, a quad four, different things, Y4, you can just go on YouTube and type in these and you can see it's a different thing, okay? So just stay on quad X. There's your or, uh, motor orientation, unless you click this and reverse it. You see it reverse the props? Normal, reverse, normal, reverse. Now, don't just click these and go, well, I want to do that because I saw these big guys you do it on. No, because you have to go into BL Heli and also make sure things are correct. <laughs> so, move over here to our ESC motor features, D-Shot 600. You got to know what your ESC is pushing. Um, some are capable of running 150 to 1200, but the one we're using on this one 600. Here's your, uh, this one here, if you click this, your motors won't spin when you arm. You definitely want the motors to spin when you arm, that's the whole thing of air mode. And an ESC sensor, you don't want to click this unless you are sure you have that ESC of that nature. Down here is your motor idle, um, up and down. You just, that's taken idle up right there. And that's taken idle down. In tuning, when I tune the quads, I do do that, I take it up and down. So the board alignment, I was telling you, when an arrow is not right, here's where you would correct that. Right here, you would just, if it's 180 out, you just do 180 or 90, just type it in and, you know. So that will align your board. Um, you can put that board in sideways, upside down, and on a slant, and correct it all throughout these axes right here. If you're going to run... Um, this is the accelerometer and all that, I don't mess with none of that. If you're going to uh, run angle mode, you're going to want to take this and do 180. Okay, so that means if your quad's upside down, it's still going to allow you to arm and do turtle mode and all that good stuff. If you keep it on zero, it will not arm when you are or at the 20 degrees or whatever. So I always put 180 on that. We'll just... Um, okay, let's jump back to this left side. System configuration. Enable gyro 32 hertz. You don't want to do that unless you know for sure your ESCs are able to handle this. You see this right here? It lets you know that. Or you just click this in beta flight. I like how they put the little question marks. Read into that. Might take a couple times to read it and understand it, but just it's easy to do. Um, accelerometer, you're going to need that on if you're running angle mode. And a barometer if you're running GPS mode. Um, you can put air mode on the switch and, you know, have both worlds. Here's going to be your craft name. This camera angle here, this is so your your uh, right stick and left stick work together. So if you put your camera angle in, let's say 30 degrees, you can turn with your yaw and it's going to add the roll in with it or vice versa. Down here on receiver, you're going to, uh, depends on what receiver you're using. Obviously we're using a serial based receiver and we're using Crossfire, CRSF, or you normally would do uh, most of you guys running XM Pluses, you would just pick S Bus and the same setup, spec set, serial base receiver. But we're doing crossfire on this one. 
Jump back over here to the right. You got your RSSI signal strength. Uh, I really don't mess with that, so I'm not going to lie to that about you. 3D ESC motor features. That's if you want to run in uh, 3D means you go. You can just stay upside down and fly upside down. But like you said, you see the the three. Uh, adjustments here you have to make sure you do all that it might be set default I don't know work but I'm not sure GPS here we are this is what we're doing so we're gonna do this we want U blocks uh, U blocks um you just more or less leave everything else the same uh, you want it to auto detect da, da, da. I see some people turn the auto bolt on some leave it off I'm not too sure on that just explaining what I know here. So on this other features here, this is just um, pretty much leave this alone. If you want to not do angle mode, air mode, just click that. You're in air mode, full blown air mode, no switches needed to be set or anything. But if you're going to do angle mode, horizon, and air mode, you're going to want to have this turned off because it's going to override everything. Telemetry, you want it on, uh, just leave it on. You want it off, just turn that off. Okay, when it comes down to here, this is a D-Shot Beacon configuration. If you have not have a, a buzzer wired to your quad, then you could turn on this and then make sure you have RX set here and then you set a switch in the modes tab and that will activate that and it gives it that dent, 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 dent kind of sound, but you don't want to leave that on. You want to just momentarily hit that as you're in the area where you know your quad went down. And if you lose battery, you don't have that option. So therefore, I know this is beta flight, but check out the V-Fly mini buzzers. They're beautiful. So that will give you no matter what you lose. You lose power unplug, it still beeps. It doesn't matter. It has its own built-in little set set or you know set battery into it. So these you can just turn off like how whatever is needed for you, like gyro calibrate it. If you really want to hear a beep when it calibrates, RX loss, RX landing. So you can more or less just turn all them off, leave your RX set, you know, and then if you want to hear a beep when you arm it and disarm, whatever you want to hear the beep on is what you would leave, this is what this basically is, beeper configuration. After you do all that, you make sure you save and reboot, always save and reboot, because if you don't save and reboot, it will do it. And I'm, I changed the thing with the GPS, so I'm not, I'm not going to leave that on anyway, so no need for me to save and reboot at this point. Power and battery. This is another thing you want to kind of set up see how this is here this is normally on point the voltage meter now if you got a 4s battery and you plug in here and your voltage you know ma and all that reads and it says 4s you know reading the voltage just go down here and up the scale to just keep up in it and hit save and you'll see when it calculates to your 6s or you can go into cli and just uh forget the exact commands but you can command it to jump into 6s or 4S because some of the voltages are off and if your voltage is off you're going to have your low battery or low warning thing telling you to land da, 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 da. so you want to make sure of all that hit save again after every time you do that it says calibration here so I guess now you just uh, plug in your battery and hit calibrate and it figures it out for you so that's awesome like I said this is a new one 10.7 I usually run uh, the version below this on my laptop so I just downloaded this today so I could do this and screen share everything. So okay, um, PID tuning. This is something that, this is a 3.5.6 firmware on that as you can see uh, on that board. So you're not going to see none of the sliders, none of that. PID tuning is something you need to fly a little bit and then start to understand. Uh, don't just go in and change numbers, you will terribly mess things up. Trust me, been there, done that. I can speak from experience on that. So then, once you get your pits down, you know, you get proportional, integral, and derivative, and feed forward. That's the P, the I, the D, if that makes sense. I know it's self-explanatory, but um, like I said, this has some different stuff that you're gonna see, because a lot of flight controllers come through with the real old versions on them. Um, but back in the day, 3.5.6 was the really laid down platform. So then in here, here's your rates. You definitely want to pick your rates. I suggest everyone to understand their own rates and lock them in. You see this is max velocity at 667 is what it's looking at. This is kind of accurate, but not always. It's a little bit off onto it. 
they did do um, on 4.2, I think it is, or whatever, there's a rate uh, thing now. So you could do KISS, Flight One, actual rates, or I forget what else was in there. So that's how you adjust all that. All this, I would suggest you definitely um, understand your quad and all that before you change it. Like TPA, you know, uh, TPA Breakpoint, your Throttle Expo. Just like understand things before you just go in there and change the numbers around or you know get some help with someone that knows what they're doing there because you can definitely have the quad acting stupid on you if you start changing numbers around. It don't make sense that it don't like it. That makes you know if you understand that. So remember, always save um, filter settings. Like I said, on 4.2 or 4.1.1, everything's a slider now. So this is all just you can mess with these filters, but I don't fool with none of that. So I would suggest you just probably stay off that tab. It's default and it will work fine for you. Until you get really heavy into tuning and stuff like that. So then you have some things over here. You have a, uh, I always just turn the V-Bat PID compensation on. Um, it's, it, if you go over here to the question mark, it will tell you exactly what it does. It increases the PID values to compensate when the V-Bat gets lower. This will give more consistent flight characteristics throughout the flight. The amount of compensation that is applied is calculated from the maximum cell voltage set in the power and battery page. So make sure that that is set to something appropriate. So you see what I'm saying? They give you all these, you know, you just hover over them and they just pop up and tell you exactly what it is. Sometimes, like I said, it takes the reading it a couple of times to understand what exactly what they're doing. All this over here, just leave it alone. <laughs> you got the wiki. Um, you can always go there and get some answers. Uh, questions to your answers or whatever this is a rate profile uh, so or PID profile on this side rate on this side this is the where you can have multiple uh, you know profiles set up if you want to fly in different areas whatever just something like that so your receiver you're going to want to always know your channel mapping AETR or T E A R one two three four or yeah so um, RSSI, if you're going to set that up, pick your aux on whatever you're going to run off your transmitter on that. This all is just all default. I'd leave it alone other than changing your channel mapping to match your stick. So in other words, when you plug in your drone and you see your drone down here just flipping out, doing all kinds of stupid stuff, that's because the channel mapping's off. And then you'll see when your roll is your pitch, your pitch is your roll, your throw, it's all backwards. So once you get the AETR or the TEAR, you'll be on point. That's pretty much covered that in this. And mode, obviously, you know, this is where you would add your switches. Um, your arm is the most important. So you would click that, then have your transmitter on, obviously, and then just flick it, you know, and it's automatically going to move this. If it doesn't, just go here and choose what's aux that switch is on, and you'll see it'll start working and functioning with it. That's how you close it out, how just close it out over there, and then make sure you hit save. Whenever you get a drone from someone, even if they build it for you, you buy it, go in and clear all of this out and hit save. Because that's your best bet, and then add all your own stuff, you know, your own switches set up and all that, because it'll drive you nuts if you don't do that. This is the motor page. This is just what it looks like. You go and come down here, you want to test your motors, you want to click this. You un acknowledge and understand that the propellers are off and if it takes off and whoops your behind it's your fault so then the master sliders here which will move you see moving one two three and four I like to move them individually because you have you know make sure motor one's motor one it's turning the right rotation when I turn it and then two and then three and four because sometimes your ESC is off and you do the master, it's just going to turn these motors and you're going to go, okay, they're all turning in the right direction, but it may not be motor one, motor two, motor three, or motor, motor, motor four. It might be four, two, three, and one, you know what I'm saying? So you have to make sure that unless you're 100% sure on your ESC, then you're good to go. But just double check all that. The OSD is whatever you want on there so if you want battery uh, voltage click that that's basically all I run you grab it move it wherever you want to make it look in your goggles you want to kind of have it up a little bit not all the way down here a lot of times you can't see it like that might not be visible um whatever you want list all through here you can put on like we're gonna do longitude 
and all that good stuff for the GPS because that's like I said we're putting GPS rescue on this guy but uh whatever you want to put on there just put on there make sure you hit save at the same time this stuff over here when you at the end of your flight this is what all you see it lets you know so this is going to show us battery current mall used battery voltage black box black box usage I don't use none of black box I just tune it RSSI minimum speed and yeah, da, da, da. it's going to tell you all that your speed and eh, it might not probably register down to what it's actually doing but close warnings this is all your warnings this is going to let you know everything in the warnings tab if something pops up and it you know sees that your drone so set however you want to whatever to pop up and uh alarms i don't mess with none of those timers i don't mess with none of those uh the video format i just leave it on auto it usually picks it pretty good make sure you hit save when you're done and it's saved uh black box eh, you can look do that as you feel but I usually don't mess with none of the black box stuff. So I think that's going to conclude on how to set up your uh, quad on Betaflight. And any questions or anything, leave them down below and I'll try to answer them best I can. Like I said, I just build drones for people. I'm an avid flyer and I thought I would just drop this because a lot of people was asking me to do this. Now, if you got your uh, accelerometer on, you can calibrate well, the accelerometer, you see the magnetometer is not lit up because of what we have it turned off. But So make sure the quad's laying flat and just hit that and you can see it move right here. It just kind of levels itself out or calibrates it is what they call it. You see it jumping around there. And see if I move it, it moves. So. But yeah, that concludes how to configure your drone in Betaflight 10.7.0 configurator. It's disconnect, always disconnect. Never just pull your plug out of your drone. Always disconnect. And that's your safest way to know that everything's fine. So for that, thank you for watching and we're going to end this.